Hi and welcome to the 15th stage of this year's Tour de France. Today the race will go from Le Mans to Montpellier. The stage is 193 kilometers long and will most likely be a mass sprint finish. My name is Dick Anderson and as always by my side our expert commentator Jim Jones. And on today's stage it was a big breakaway that broke away from the peloton. It was Michael Buffas from Cofidis, Julian Alfarez from Cofidis, Geraint Thomas from Sky, Muraya from Radio Shack, Isagir from Euskatel, Turgot from Europecar, Meersman from France de Cheux, Tusato from Saxobank, Pavel Brut from Katusha, Gutierrez from Movistar, Iglinski from Astana, Daniel Oss from Liquigas, Thomas Digant from Vacan Soleil and Jeremy Roy from France de Cheux. And as always, we start off with some recap footage, and here you got a footage from earlier today. And on the sprint on today's stage, it was Tusato in front of Meersman and Gutierrez who captured 20, 17 and 15 points. And it was only one point to fight for in the peloton, and it was Mark Cavendish from HTC High Road who captured the one point. Now it's time to end our recap footage and tune in live on PCM Norway Productions coverage of this year's Tour de France. Hi and welcome back, we are now live, it's 40 kilometers left for the breakaway group and the peloton is 3 minutes and 23 seconds behind. Uh, Jim, it's a rest day tomorrow, so we have to make up some uh, discussion points, and we should just start today. Who do you think came best out of the Pyrenees uh, among the favorites? Um, I must say Andy Schleck. Uh, he gained time on his, uh, on his uh, com uh, competitors, um, so he's 1 minute and 34 seconds in ahead of Cat Levens. Um, but if Cat Levens doesn't lose anything more, uh, or perhaps gain some time, um, he will definitely be a, a fair uh, contender for the yellow jersey in Paris. Yeah, because of his time trial abilities. Yeah, uh, and compared uh, to Andy. I must also say that Chris Horner came out of the Pyrenees also uh, very good, um, yeah. despite what he's been doing in uh, previous years. Yeah, he, what is he now? A little bit over two minutes behind? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we talked before the Pyrenees who was going to be the king of the Pyrenees. and. Um, it wasn't John Gadre, but it was another. But it was another Frenchman, um, yeah. David Moncoutier. Do, does he have a firm um, grip among the King of the Mountain jersey now? Um, yes, I think uh, there will only be one rider who can uh, contend for uh, <laughs> or can get him some competition for uh, for the Clambers jersey, and that's uh, John Gadre. Really? Okay. <laughs> So, not Roman Kreuziger, not Andy Schleck, but John Gadre. John Gadre. Okay, okay, I got you. Uh, okay, uh, move on, moving on to the, um, to the youth classification, uh, the white jersey. Robert uh, Grethink got it in front of uh, Roman Kreuziger, who went in a break uh, in the Pyrenees. I think it's 3 minutes uh, 13 seconds down to um, Gethink from for uh, Kreuziger. Uh, does he have a fair shot at, shot at that uh, jersey now? Um, but well, just one second here, Jim. Uh, Julian Alvarez are attacking with Gutierrez on his wheel. They are breaking away from their breakaway companions. Uh, could they? Could they hold off, Jim? Um, I think the Pelta really wants a, a sprint finish today. Yeah. Um, you can see HTC and Garmin. Yeah. <laughs> They've been working hard all day. So uh, a sprint finish for a sure. Sp a sprint finish. Um, so back to the youth. But, but he is a strong um, time trail uh, rider. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, he could he could make it today. Spanish uh, champion in the time trial uh, a lot of times and uh, has been doing well in the world championship some uh, some years back as well. But back to the youth classification, Jim. Uh, could Roman Kreuziger seize that jersey? Could he keep up with Robert Rethink in the Alps? And we do know that he's a little bit better than him on uh, on time trial. Uh, if he doesn't lose anything uh, in the mountains, I still don't think he'll be able because it's three minutes. Mm -hmm. um, and a few seconds. Yeah. Uh, and he's going to lose some time in the mountains, I'm pretty sure, to, uh, to Robert Gersink. Yeah, okay. So, um, Robert Gersink already got that jersey, though, uh, if, if he uh, stays out of trouble. Yeah. Okay. We can see that the peloton just uh, caught up with the original breakaway group. Uh, uh, Julian Alvarez and uh, Gutierrez are still in front. 
and the peloton are chasing them. So uh, less than 20 kilometers left to go. As well, yes. And uh, Jim, we have seen that Garmin and HTC has been pulling at the front. Does that mean good legs for Cavendish, and can he finally get his stage win today? Well, uh, there's always hope for Mark Cavendish, even if he's got a good sprint train or or not. Um, he's uh, he, he's the fastest sprinter in the world. Uh, but we. But we've seen that Adibus has been showing really great power in this uh, year's Tour de France, so um, I think he'll be up there today, um, and we can expect Tyler Ferrer, Grapel, and of course Mark Cavendish. Yeah, and uh, you uh, spoke a little bit about Eddie Boss, and he has been climbing very well compared to Mark Cavendish. We know that he's a better climber than him. Could that have an effect today? Well, I think he's been saving Evan NG, uh, Eddie Boss, mm. uh, so he, he will have. Uh, Better legs than uh, Cavendish today, I think. Okay, so uh, it's almost five kilometers left. It's Garmin Cervelo at the front with HTC right behind them. They are, uh, just like the other days, uh, battling to get the best lead out. You can see that Edvald Bosenhagen in his green jersey are there on the left-hand side. And Andy Schleck is there as well, staying out of trouble by uh, being at the front. Five kilometers to go, and here we can see that HTC are punching in with uh, the, their lead-out uh, train there. Mark Cavendish taking a lot of win on the right-hand side, but doesn't seem to really matter. Julian Dean leading out Tala Ferrar, who shall went out to the media today and told that he will not be a lead-out man anymore. He got a free roll now, and we can see that Greipel is on the wheel of Tala Ferrar. Royas Gill is on the wheel of Mark Cavendish. And there goes Matthew Goss, and Tala Ferrar goes directly from the wheel of Julian Dean. Andre Greipel is there, but Edward Bosnager advancing on the left-hand side. Could Mark Cavendish counter? No, it looks like it's going to be Edvard Bosnagen, Eddie Boss from Norway, in front of Mark Cavendish and Andre Greipel. So, uh, Jim. Another stage win for, <laughs> for Eddie Boss. He's, uh, he's been incredible in this year's uh, Tour de France. And, uh, but uh, this is the closest that, uh, that Mark Cavendish has been so far. Yeah, so definitely, uh, definitely. Definitely uh, getting in a better shape now and uh, perhaps a stage win uh, in Paris. Yeah, and yet another disappointing stage for Tyler Ferrar. He, uh, even though he gets a top five position, it's uh, it's not where he wants to be. Yeah, but it didn't seem like he should uh, involve himself in that sprint. Maybe he's going uh, for a breakaway on uh, the next stages. Yeah, like I said uh, in the sprint, he he's been gotten a free roll now, I think. So uh, yeah, uh, Andy Schleck keeps his yellow jersey. Edvald Bosnagen takes another uh, step towards Paris and the green jersey by beating Mark Cavendish on the line today. And um, David Moncoutier keeps the king of the mountain jersey, of course. And uh, Robert Rethink is uh, the youth classification holder. And uh, Radio Shack is the best team, still. So, uh, Jim, um, any final thoughts on uh, this stage? Uh, this was more like a transport stage, I think, into the to the rest day and soon we'll hit the Alps. Yes, we will. This was all we had time for from PCM Norway Productions. I've been Dick Anderson. Alongside me was our expert commentator, Jim Jones. Arrivederci! Arrivederci.